So let's go ahead and start modeling this space. And there are, it's pretty arbitrary as far as where to start. You could really begin, you've got a plan, you could really begin anywhere. Let's take a look at some of the photos we've got. And let's develop a good strategy. I'm going to go ahead and look at just my elevations. It's always good to have a lot of good reference when you're working on something. So let's go ahead and try to get these side by side. There's never, there's never a big enough screen for this. Uh, if I'm looking at this, at this model, let's go ahead and look at it in the direction we're looking at now. So this area here is this door here. And then we've got this kind of expanse of stone tiled wall followed by a section that has some glass, some larger stone tiles above, and then more glass above that. And that would be this section here. Okay, So we can kind of start to see as we look at the photos and the plans, we're starting to make a little bit of sense of this. I like to start, when I'm looking at a space like this, if I'm looking through these photos, I think that the easiest place to start is probably the, the parts of the model that are most solid. And I would think that that's probably this wall and this wall here. So let's start building the model looking at these points. And what we're going to need to know is we're going to need to know some elevation points. Because the building was kind enough to give us the plans, but they did not have access to the elevations. So we had to take our own notes. So let's look at those. That would be here. Go ahead and shut this down. Okay, so we're going to work on this wall and we're going to work on this wall. So let me be a little bit more, even more specific. We're going to work on elevation C and we're going to work on elevation A. So let's get started here. I'm going to keep these up and kind of in the background and I'll jump to those as needed. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw or drag a guide. So I'm going to hit T for tape. And I'm going to drag a guide so that it pops to this spot. So I want to line up with the edge, the inside edge of this wall. And I'm going to do the same thing from this side to this point here, or to this wall. So I've got two interior walls. I like to have my face styles up so that I can toggle the stuff on and off. Whoops, you know what, forget I said that. Ignore that. <laughs> because you can't toggle on and off a, um, a JPEG that you've imported unless it's a material, which we have not made it a material. So forget I said that. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to now work on the first wall. Let's work on this elevation here. Let's work on elevation C. Okay, so let's get that up into place. If I click from this point to this point, it looks like the walls are basically 12 inches thick. So I'm going to type in 12, enter. Remember, I don't have to type in inches because SketchUp by default works in inches first, then feet. And I'm going to drag another, another guide to this point here. Click. Okay. So but I basically, and then it doesn't, it really doesn't matter if we extend beyond what we're going to see. So let's just go ahead and start with a rectangle. If you've given yourself a few guides, all you really need is, is two or three. If you've given yourself a few guides, you can start at an intersection of those guides and then just use the guides as reference. The reason I like um, using a JPEG as a plan for reference is, um, instead of using it as material. We used it as a material in the first class because we were kind of just learning how to start with materials. But the reason I like using a JPEG now is because when I double click on this and I make it a group by hitting G, and then if I open this up, I can still see the plan. If I've got, um, if I have, a mat if this is a material instead, let's go ahead and explode this. You don't, don't do this. Don't, don't follow along with this part. This is just more for an example. So I've exploded it and made it a group. Now, by exploding it, if I look in my materials palette, I can see it there. So now I know that this is a material now instead of just a JPEG that's being referenced. Um, now when I open this up, 
this group up, that disappears. So I can no longer see the plan because now this is like its own, this is now basically a little shape with a material on it. I don't want that. I want to be able to open these up and still see the plan. I don't care if I see anything else, but it's nice to still be able to still be able to see the plan as I'm working, especially once I'm making things into groups. So I'm just going to undo that that little few steps I did. Okay. So I know it's I now know it's not a uh, it's not a material because I can't double click on it and open it. Right. It's basically just something that I can pick up and move around. I can't actually I can't actually double click to open it like it's a group. And I also know by if I open this up and push pull this up into space, I can see that I'm still working on top of a uh, of a JPEG. So for now, let's let's go ahead and take a look outside of this and see what our highest point is. We're looking at elevation C right here. Our highest known point on this elevation is 22 feet, and on the opposite side, uh, the bottom of the the beam here is at 23 foot 9. So because we know that this wall goes a little bit higher than all of that, let's just take this up to 26 feet. Enter. All right. So that's step one. Let's do the same thing on this side. We've got a guide here that we can snap off of and, and start to drag it in this direction. We're going to do 12. Enter. So we can see that that's about how thick that wall is. Some of this is assumption. You know, we're not making engineering plans. We're really just making a 3D model for visual reference, and the plans already exist. So we're worried about being accurate, but we're not slavishly worried about being accurate, at least not for this model. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag this all the way across. We're going to be doing a lot of carving and cutting and stuff like that, so I'm really at this point just worried about getting the major pieces in place. So I double-click on that group. I mean, I'm sorry, I double click on that shape, I hit G to group it, then I double click on it to open it up. Notice that I can't see this, uh, this group anymore, it's, it's kind of shaded away because it's not active, but I can still see the plan below. I activate my P for push-pull, and I go ahead and drag this up, and I just reference that same spot. So we're taking it up to about 26 feet. Okay, let's go ahead and close that down. All right, let's take a look at what else, what other bit of information we've got. We'll probably need to reference the photos as well. Let's look at this elevation here. So we've got at eight feet a line that represents the underside of this material. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw that shape, or draw that guide, I should say. Okay, so we go T for tape, and we take this up to eight feet, enter. I'm going to go ahead and hide this, and let's see where that thing starts. So we've got a new, we've got a, a new material that starts right about here. We pull up the um, photo as well. It's a little bit of a juggling act, but it's kind of it's kind of good because it's it's pretty real world to have to, to have to look at a, a bunch of different things at once, especially if you're modeling a real space. That's why I think it's really helpful to have these photos out and available. But of course, in our digital world where we're talking back and forth, that's not as easy to do. Okay, there we go. So let's have this available to look at as well. So we're working on carving away this area and this area. And because this is connected to it, we might as well just push out this whole, this whole piece. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to take a guide and I'm going to snap it to the edge of this wall here right here. Okay, we'll worry about the fact that this is a different material uh, in our actual material application later. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull to this point here to the extension of this wall. Click. Okay, so we're basically right near that little one note. You can see where there's that little jog right here. Go ahead and unhide that wall. I can drag some guides along the face of this wall to touch the points that I've just given myself off of that off of that uh, plan. Now I can open this up by double clicking, take my rectangle tool, draw a rectangle on that face, and then push pull by clicking once on the face, push it back so that it says on face in the back, and click again. So we've carved that little section out. 
All right, just above that, we've got this new bit of material here. So I'm just going to separate the materials on the wall because it looks pretty flush in my, in my uh, photos. So instead of making this a new piece sitting on top of this wall, I'm just going to carve it out of this wall. So let's take a look at our information on the elevation and see what we got here. The top point of that is 16 foot 8 inches. So let me go ahead and from the bottom of the floor with my tape, start at the bottom, drag up 16 foot 8 enter. Now I will open this wall up again. I'm going to select the face just so I see that I've, that I've got it active. And I'm going to take my rectangle tool and click from one point to the bottom. And I can see now that I've separated this into two separate planes, which is good. What's next? Now we've got this section of window here that's at 22 feet off the ground. All of these dimensions, by the way, are um, off of the finished floor of the of the ground. So we're not, you know, it's not 22 feet from 16. It's 22 feet from the from the floor. So let me go ahead and repeat this again. We're going. What did I say it was? It's 22 feet exactly. So let's do our measuring tape from the floor. Drag this up. 22 feet. Enter. Okay, now, how do I know how far across this goes? I'm not able to actually get up there in reality with a big giant ladder and measure this. So I can do it kind of visually, and it looks to me like I've got one, two, three, four squares of glass. So I'm going to, using just kind of some, some visual reference, I'm gonna, if, if this is five foot four, I'm going to say that these are probably roughly five feet. So I'm going to do five feet, enter, five feet, five feet, five feet, which is, of course, ultimately 20 feet. Now I will select from this point here to that point using my rectangle tool, go back to my select, and select this face, then push pull it into oblivion by pushing, push pulling it back on itself. Click and close. Now what I can do is go ahead and make a new, a new piece because I want to set that glass back inside that wall. So I'm going to get my rectangle and click from this point to this point. Immediately select it and group it. I'm not worried about making materials yet. We're just going to start with a foam core, pretend that this is a foam core white model, definitely add materials to this right away, but not right now. Um, we will get there soon. Because I've already got these guides in place for me, I can just take a line and I can draw it right down each guide, kind of indicating the seam in the glass. Now to select this piece of glass and I'll move it back in place. Get, um, get myself in kind of a nice axonometric view and move it back along the thing. I don't want to take it all the way back 12 inch uh, full foot because it wouldn't really be sitting like that clean on the wall. So I'll just take it 10 inches back. Okay. And we've got that piece done. I would say without, with the exception of the doors, which we'll get to kind of really right now, just punching out, we we're, we're going to, start with big, big gestures and make our way down. Um, so before we get to the, oh, you know what? You know what I just noticed? All right, this is good. It's okay if we uh, make a little error here. I just noticed that this, let's, let's, let's see if we can zoom in on this here. I just noticed that this line here doesn't line up with this line here. We've got a little bit of a gap in the wall. So that just means everything has to shift over, which is not a big deal at all. So what that means is I have to open this up by double clicking on it, extend this rectangle over from here to here, and go ahead and delete this line. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and also edit, delete my guides so that they're out of the way. 
So this shape actually extends all the way to the edge of the wall. It doesn't line up the way I had originally drawn it. And I'm glad that this kind of thing is happening because this is the kind of thing that happens all the time when you're working on a model. You have to make these little adjustments. So I'm sure this will not be our last. Um, which also means that I have to shift this whole section over so that it's touching the wall. This gap here doesn't exist. So what I'm going to do is double click this to open it up. I'm going to select the entire opening. I'm using my my select tool and I'm starting on the left hand side and I'm making a bounding box around the whole all, only what I want to select versus this which is going to select a bunch of stuff I don't want. So if I come from the right and make my way towards the left it's going to select more than I need. So I'm starting from the left side and I'm going all the way and I'm making sure to encapsulate the entire box. Now I'm going to move this whole shape over. Just move it straight along that green axis until I hit the end point of this, uh, of this thing. And if I hold shift down, even better. It'll force it. Let me just go ahead and kind of actively get it. Okay, it'll force it to slide along this, this plane. So I can reference this face because I want it to be lined up with that. Click once and be done. And now I can close this group by selecting outside of it. Select this group hit my move tool, do the exact same thing, hold shift down and just move it all over. So let's take a look and see how we're doing. Okay, that looks a little better. We've got this nice and lined up. We've got this now kind of over about where it wants to be. Again, this isn't measured accurately based on any notes we've taken. This is just kind of doing some uh, visual uh, uh, mystery solving. Okay, let's start to work on this on this next wall. All right, and for the sake of the for the sake of file size, let's work on this next wall in uh, our next video.